you know what? We're just gonna do it again. Cause when do we not just film it again? Hi. <laughs> again this is the second filming hi how's it going i haven't done a regular podcast episode in like a month and you'll note that we are in a different location this is the first video at my new apartment so that's exciting i have been moving for literally one full calendar one full gregorian calendar month it has been torturous i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy who currently is an 80-year-old grandmother who gardens at the community garden I garden at, who told me my plants were encroaching on her plot. But that's another story for another day. Hi. <laughs> so today we have a couple of finished objects, a couple of whips, and some acquisitions. A few. It's going to be a shorter episode. If the previous filming tells us anything, it'll be exactly 25 minutes and 18 seconds. So we'll see. Let's get started with the finished objects. First things first, we have the June Top by Petite Knit. This is knit in a Noro yarn that I am forgetting the name of, but I will put it here. I will say I like the yarn. The yarn is gorgeous and it feels really good knit up. I question the longevity of this one. It's already starting to pill and I have worn this once. And as I was working with the yarn, it was very prone to breaking. It didn't break when I was knitting, luckily. But if you put like any force on the yarn, it just like, it doesn't break, it just like breaks like that. It's kind of weird. I don't know what the deal was with that, but it wasn't my favorite yarn to work with. However, I do really love the colors and I think the top is cute. It's not my favorite. I'm going to be honest. It's knit bottom up, which is not my favorite construction. I don't think it's anybody's favorite construction. <laughs> and I know, I know you can do a provisional cast on and like knit up and then down. Look me in the eyes and tell me that's not a whole thing. I don't know. That just sounds like a lot to take on. So I just knit it bottom up. I would like it longer, ideally. It's not bad though. Like when I wear my shorts, my pants are, they're mostly high-waisted, so it's not debilitating, but it's like, I just wish it was a little bit longer. I really like the shaping though in the back. I will say it's not bra friendly. That is something that is touted about this pattern and I do not find it to be true. So that's worth noting. I don't know. Overall, it's not my favorite, but it's cute. I give it like a solid six and a half, seven out of 10. The June top, it's not bad, it's cute. Our next finished object you have seen half of, and that is my petal drop socks. This is a handmade by Florence pattern, and I just finished this one this morning. I have not blocked it, so it's rather silly. This is the one that has been blocked. And please look at the insane difference between these socks. <laughs> This is why we block things. Look at how much better this one looks than this one. I mean, lace work always really does look so much better after you block it, but this is a very stark contrast. <laughs> so I knit these in a local dyer her sock base. It's the cereal knit? Cereal knitters? I don't know. And the color's called olive oil, and I really love this green. It's like a subtle brat summer nod. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very happy with these. I really enjoy Florence's sock patterns. I think she's very consistent in all of her pattern writing, but especially with socks. Like I, my other pair of socks I knit from Florence were the chunky DK mountain walk, I think, socks. And those are obviously a DK weight and these are a regular sock weight. They fit exactly the same, which is crazy. Like how do you get the sizing that perfectly? Two different weights of socks. That's just impressive. She's just very good at sizing and grading and pattern writing. Big fan of Florence, as we know. Yeah, pedal drop socks. I think they're super cute. They took a while. It's a lace knit sock. It's gonna take a minute, but I'm happy. Let's talk about whips, shall we? I'm gonna start with the one that is just absolutely plaguing my existence. And when I'm talking about something that's plaguing my existence, of course it is none other than the halibut. <laughs> I have not made much more progress on this since the last time we saw it on the podcast, which is frustrating. I have to be doing color work wrong. I just have to because this sucks. It is not fun to knit 
color work like this. I have to be doing it wrong because there's no way that people would just do this for fun. It's horrible. Setting down the yarn and like moving five things every time I want to switch colors makes me want to rip my hair out. I hate, I have to be doing something wrong. Please give me your color work tips because this can't be right. <laughs> I'm not having a good time, honestly. I'm stressed out. I talked about this in the last episode and somebody was like, just put it over your head and measure it. And I was like, yeah, I know, but also it's deeper than that. Because I, I'm gonna split for sleeves early because I don't want a swancho. Hot take, I guess. I just like, I'm worried because I've never done a circular yoke sweater. So I don't know like when to split. I don't know how many stitches to leave for sleeves. I don't know if it's gonna disrupt the pattern. I'm just stressed out. And like, there's so much at stake here. This has been like months of my life and we aren't even through the yoke that's insane so clearly i'm not like having the best time while knitting this but i really want to finish it just so i can get it over with first of all but second of all look at how cool this is this is not the coolest sweater you've ever seen this is gonna be so sick if i ever finish it i need to i need to somebody needs to tell me how to do color work because this simply cannot be this can't be right i'm using explorer knits and fibers earthy dk for the orange and the color pike place and then the blue is knitting for olive heavy merino in dusty aqua it's gonna be really cool if i ever finish it it's just also so hot out and i don't want to knit like a heavy wool sweater when it's this hot out it's horrible but yeah that's that's the hell of it so sick of it i'm sorry i am ivy's joining me hello beanie what are you doing on a podcast don't panic look who's here look who's here hey baby she's just a baby my co-host has arrived oh and she's as mysteriously as she joined us she has left she's right there but cat fur in my lip gloss now anyway our next work in progress was a very impulsive cast on a couple nights ago i out of the blue decided to cast on the maggie cardigan by Petite Knit in one of my Savannah Rose handmade Midsummer Rebloom collection yarns. So if you do recall the few of you that watched my last vlog, I was working up a vacation vest and I made it maybe, god there's still cat hair in my lip gloss, ugh. I made it maybe a 13th of the way through the vacation vest. Ivy does this thing where she like chews on cardboard boxes. <laughs> And, like spits out the pieces when she gets stressed out like this is just something she does and we've just moved so she's been a little bit on edge and there's been cardboard boxes around <laughs> so she's just like wait, 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 you're so weird Ivy you're boxes so if you hear like a ripping noise that would be my cat chewing and then spitting out pieces of cardboard because that's a normal thing <laughs> to do <laughs> anyway um this is the maggie cardigan yeah but if you do recall this initially was a vacation vest i just really didn't like how the built-in ribbing was turning out it was like really loose and lumpy and like awkward it just it didn't look good and i noticed like on the pattern page it was kind of split like some people had the same thing going on where the ribbing just wasn't as clean as it looked in the product pictures and then other people's it looked more like it did in parks so i think it must just be like a gauge thing i don't know the pattern it's a really cute pattern obviously and if you can get that to work for you i think it's adorable it just wasn't working for me and it was making me annoyed so frogged it Cast on the Maggie cardigan. Did I intend to do this pattern in a bright orange? No. Is that how things ended up happening? Yeah, and I'm not mad about it. I think it's really kind of fun. I don't know. Who do you know that has a bright orange short-sleeved cardigan? Me. <laughs> I love that. But yeah, it's working up really quickly. I started this two nights ago, I think, and I've basically just been knitting it in the evenings when my boyfriend's, my boyfriend's, and no, I only have the one. <laughs> 
when my boyfriend and I have been watching the Olympics in the evening, we've been watching the highlights. And so I've just literally only been knitting it during Olympics time and it's working up really quickly. And I think it's gonna be cool. It's kind of an interesting construction because I just joined the back yoke and the front shoulders. And now it's like kind of circular. You can see that like, it's like a circle and then it goes around. It's like a half circle almost. So I don't really know where we're going with this, but I'm intrigued seems cool. I don't know. I'm happy with it. I think, I think this was a fun pivot that we took. I went down a needle size. I'm using a 3.25 millimeter US 3 needle. The pattern calls for a 3.5 millimeter. So I went down one needle size because I went up a yarn weight, which is such an excellent transition into the next portion of our video, which is yarn acquisitions. So the yarn that I'm using for this is of course the Savannah Rose Handmade Midsummer Rebloom Collection brand new plant-based yarn. This is on the base Daisy DK, which is 100% Prima, Pima, Prima, Pima, there's no R, Pima cotton, and it has 218 yards for 100 grams. This is in the color Poppy Delirium, and I love this color. It's so funny because the day before Savannah announced this colorway, I posted on my story asking for people to give me recommendations for the perfect cantaloupe orange yarn. So initially I wanted something a little bit more muted and like cantaloupe-y, but then Savannah dropped this and I was like, wait a second, maybe that's the universe telling me I need to go brighter. So I took it as a sign and I ordered three, <laughs> as one does. It's really subtly variegated. Savannah, I think her specialty is subtle variegation. She does such a good job at blending colors. Her like very softly variegated yarns, I think are some of the best I've ever seen. They blend so well and they knit up so scrumptiously. I don't think I've said that word in years, but they're scrumptious. They, they knit up so good and she's just so good at color theory and she has such an eye for just picking out colors and like creative direction. I just think Savannah's the coolest. I'm a big fan, Cle clearly, as I talk about her in every episode. <laughs> but yeah, this is Daisy DK, one of her new plant-based bases, and I really have been enjoying knitting this. It's so like soft and silky, but it's just cotton. I don't know how that's possible. I also don't know how she gets these colors so vibrant. I don't know if it's gonna pick up exactly how vibrant it is, but in real life it like glows. It's crazy, crazy pretty. Very excited about this one. Also on Daisy DK, I ordered Florence, which is another nice soft variegated tonal, I think we call these. A really pretty mix of like hot pink and lighter pinks. And as I said, they just blend together so perfectly. I really, really love this color. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. I'm thinking a tank top. I ordered two skeins. So I have what, 200 grams of this. Let me know if you have any recommendations for this yarn because I, it needs to be something special. It needs to be something worthy of this yarn. Next up, we have the new Aster Sock Fingering Weight yarn base. And this is in the color Faded Fairy Tale. It's a really, really pretty purpley, bluey, silvery. When they showed up, I literally unboxed them and just stared at them for like 20 minutes. And I was just like, it's so pretty. Look at how pretty <laughs> to my boyfriend. He thinks, he thinks I'm a crazy person, which is probably correct. But just look at how gorgeous that is. So this is a 70% bamboo, 30% linen base. It has 437 yards for 100 grams and it is four ply. It's very like soft and silky, but it's also a little bit toothy, I think is how I would describe it. Like it has some texture, like it, it has some like grip to it. Sorry, I did that. It has some grip to it that makes it unique and makes it kind of fun to work with. I knitted up a little bit of this before I decided to cast on the Maggie cardigan, so that got put away. Big fan, big fan. I big fan. I big fan. I am a big fan. Next up, we have Annie Sock Fingering Weight Base on the infamous May Queen colorway. I think this is Savannah's like most iconic colorway. It's how I found her initially, but look at how cool that is. Oh, these are gonna be the coolest socks ever. Look at how freaking awesome. It's so cool. And it's so squishy. Most sock yarns aren't like this slush, I think. Yeah, I'm very excited. I don't know what sock I wanna make exactly. Part of me just wants to do like a vanilla sock just so the colors like stand out, but then part of me wants to get crazy with it. I don't know, what if we just, 
Or we're just not crazy, <laughs> you know? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where this ends up, but I am excited to have it. I ordered some of the mohair in this colorway last year. Let me grab it. It's like right here. This is the May Queen mohair I got last year, and I started knitting a Ghost Whisperer top in this, and then I lost track of it. It got super tangled, so I had to un unravel it, but also gorgeous, also stunning. Look how pretty. Ooh, maybe I'll do something with them together. That could be interesting. We'll see. We'll see. I love this color. I love this yarn. Okay, and then our last acquisition. This one's special. So this is another skein of Daisy DK. This one Savannah just sent me as a little as a little treat, which was so nice. And this is in the colorway Maxine Makes, an experimental edition. So this is from Savannah's new Pearl X Maxine collection. The pre-order is still open. Go check it out. It will be linked. And this was one of the experimental dyes of the Maxine Makes collection. Way. So the finalized version turned out like this, and then this is one of the original schemes. This is just stunning. Like this is, again, that soft variegation that I think she just does so beautifully. It almost looks like sea glass, I think. As I said, the finalized colorway of the Maxine Minx color is a lot more emerald leaning, but I think the colorway I'm a star, I think that's the one, ended up being kind of the more like muted-y green. muted -y. That's not a word. <laughs> kind of more of this muted green that we see in this skein. So if you're wanting to get something similar to this, I would recommend the I'm a Star colorway. Or you could get the Maxine Minx and make something super beautiful and emerald green. And I would get them if I wasn't on a soft yarn buying ban at the moment. I call it a soft ban because I don't like placing bans on myself. I don't know. I tend to rebel against like hard limits like that. <laughs> so I've, I've found it better for my brain to just call it like a, a soft band. And the reason for that is because Block Fiberfest is next weekend, so I needed to like not be buying yarn all summer. I ordered the pre-order in June, beginning of June. So it's been like two months that I haven't bought any yarn, which doesn't sound, when you say it like that, like it doesn't sound that impressive. But to me, I'm proud of myself. And that's what is most important, I think. But yeah, so Flock is next weekend. I'm really excited. I'm going with a couple friends. I'm gonna vlog and I'm also gonna film, I think, some sort of like haul afterwards. We'll see. I don't know. I don't really know how that's gonna look. I'm kind of just gonna let it happen how it happens naturally and just film whatever Flock tells me to film. So yeah, that'll be really fun. And then after Flock, I'm going to Europe. So I'm gonna be in Europe for a month and I'm going to Denmark, Amsterdam, Paris, Nice, and Florence. So I'm going to five locations. I'm gonna be in Denmark for like 10 days because my one of my best friends lives in Denmark. So I'm gonna be with her for like 10 days. And then my other best friend is who I'm going on the trip with. We're gonna be in all the other locations for like five days, I think, four or five days each. What I need from you guys is recommendations for European European yarn stores that you love, as well as European yarn brands and just yarns that you love that you can mostly only get in Europe. Let me know what you recommend, what you think I should go see, what I should do, what I should film. I'm going to be vlogging. Tax write-off. <laughs> I don't know how tax write-offs work. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to be filming, so just let me know where I should go, and I'm really excited. It's going to be a super cool trip. I've never left America, guys. I am kind of scared. It's like a 12-hour flight from here. We have a layover in Iceland, so it's like 10 hours to get from here to Iceland, and then a couple hours from Iceland to Denmark. So I'm a bit nervy, because I've been on like two planes in my entire life, and they were both really short flights. So I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> But my best friend who I'm traveling with, she's like very well-traveled and very knowledgeable and perfect and amazing. So I'm in very good hands. Like if there's anybody to do this trip with in my position, it's her. It's going to be really, really fun. Anyway, let me know where I should go, what I should do, what yarn I should buy, most importantly. I bought vacuum seal bags specifically for yarn because we're only bringing carry-on, <laughs> so I'm going to have to like vacuum that shit down. Yeah, thank you for watching and I hope I will... See you soon. Take care.